Right, so the winds are really kicking up now, and I thought I would take a few moments to do a bit of a torture test to see, uh, I don't know, whether or not the modifications that I made to this camera make a difference or not. So, uh, one of the biggest problems with these cameras seems to be that they have terrible, absolutely terrible audio quality. Now, I've uh, made a few modifications to this camera and right now the wind is really kicking up. Like, have a look across the street. I don't know if you can see that flag or not, but you'll, you'll see that the wind is really blowing. And uh, under normal conditions, I think you would notice that it would render the hardware completely unusable. I mean, trying to get anything worthwhile from the device would be a complete impossibility. So I've made a few changes that may or may not help. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not expecting much at all. But I do believe that hopefully what I'll be able to get from this camera will at least now be somewhat usable, where before, I think, under conditions such as this, well, it would just be hopeless. So anyway, we'll see what happens. I mean, it, it's worth a try. Um, I mean, why not? To be honest with you, this <laughs> this device is really old. I think it was uh, probably manufactured in 2012, maybe 2014. But uh, anyway, you slice it by today's standards, it's. Uh, quite obsolete. That said, I do like the device for a few reasons. Uh, firstly, it's about as simple to use as it could be. You know, one of the biggest problems I think with a lot of these devices is that they just have too many features, you know. Uh, the last thing I want to do when I'm uh, trying to make a documentary or get out in the field and just shoot some footage really fast is I don't want to fumble around with any kind of settings. I don't want to have to remember anything. I just want to turn the thing on and shoot. And uh, these cameras are particularly good for that purpose. I also like the fact that they have an extremely wide angle field of view, which makes it very, very easy to just get a shot. You don't have to think about it. You just turn the damn thing on and point it in the direction that you want to see and hope for the best. And 90% of the time, you're going to catch what you like. So I think that's a a really big plus in the favor of these things. So, uh, the biggest problem as I see it is just the audio. The audio on these things, it's, it's traditionally just terrible. I mean, so bad, almost unusable. And uh, I always find that when I'm out and about, taking and making footage that I have to consciously speak much more loudly at the camera than I would normally. And that's something that I don't like to do because it feels unnatural 
And uh, frankly, you know, I mean, when you're doing that, a lot of people are out like looking at you and thinking, well, what the hell is that all about? You know? So I don't know. It's uh, swings and roundabouts, really. I guess there's no perfect solution, at least not one that's inexpensive and very simple to use. You know, the other thing is, is that when you're using a camera that's as cheap and crappy as this one is, you don't really care if the thing gets destroyed. I mean, I'm more than willing to tape this camera, you know, uh, to the bottom of an undercarriage of a truck, if need be, in order to get a shot on. I mean, who cares, right? If the thing comes flying off at 65 miles an hour, winds up in the gutter, well, you know, I haven't lost anything. Whereas if I'm using a device that is worth thousands of dollars, that might be a big problem. So, things to think about, really. Anyway, I think I'm going to conclude this episode for now, and uh, I will talk to you later. See ya. Bye.